The scripture for today's message is Isaiah chapter 58 verses 6 through 9. Is this not the fast that I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Is it not the to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house and when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh then your light will break out like a dawn and your recovery will speedily spring forth and your righteousness will go before you the glory of the Lord will be your we are guard then you will call and the Lord will answer you will cry and he will say here I am if you remove the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. Emmanuel Choir and Nisha Orchestra will glorify God with their praise and performance. And then Senior Pastor will deliver a message. Let me introduce today's flower offering. It's a Chinese parish. Thank you for um, calling us to this precious church among the 8 billion people and leading us to New Jerusalem. We want to become a parish that brings uh, forth a good fruit to the senior pastor's great ministry that saves numerous souls with the amazing power and the five gospel, gospel of holiness. With an earnest heart and hope, we give this flower offering, the 20th parish. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, for the last four weeks, we looked at the reasons for prayer and the kinds of prayer pleasing to God. If you keep the words in mind and act accordingly, your prayers will be pleasing to God and you will be able to receive answers quickly. It will also help you come into spirit faster. But sometimes there are instances where people cannot receive any answers even through prayer. These can include, if I go into detail, it will take more than one hour. So I will briefly explain them. I hope that you keep those in mind and apply that in, to your prayer life. These can include prayer. Even though you cry out in prayer, and then you wonder why you are not receiving answer, this is regrettable. These can include prayer harboring sin. You may wonder, because I'm not sanctified, I have sin, does this mean I will not be answered? No. If you have, while you committing such deeds of flesh without repenting heart, if you pray, say, please answer me, then you will not receive an answer. So what should you do? Before you offer prayer, you have to offer repentance. That's why. You should not, you, sh you should, you remember having become irritated, having become angry, and you should have a repenting heart, ask God for forgiveness, and even as you offer prayer yourself, you have to pray to cast off such evil, and then you have to you have to say, Father, even though I have shortcomings, I have this heart, my heart wish, please answer me. You have to know what should you pray first and what should you think about that. You are irritated. You tell lies. You get angry and then you come to church and say and then you even offer dumb prayer and you come to church early in the morning and but you only talk about financial blessings, talk about wisdom that you have to receive. You ask for such your individual needs, but you don't cast off your sins and evil. Then how could you receive an answer? 
Father God wants uh, wants your soul to prosper first. So you have to Uh, prayer amidst discord with flood of brothers and sisters. Even the Bible says that if you have broken peace with your brothers and you are trying to offer, give offerings, then you have to leave your offerings on the altar and then go and make peace with the brother and again come back and offer, uh, give the offering. Let's say you have someone whom you are you have ill feelings against. Does this mean you should not pray at all? No. You should try to make peace. You should show these. You still have a narrow heart. You still cannot embrace them. So you have to come and pray, Father, I cannot, I fail to make peace. Please help me make peace. You have to pray with such a heart, such a earnest heart. then Father God would answer you. But if you make an enemy of your brother, if you obviously hate your brother, and then you think he committed a fault, I am no, I have no fault, and you ask God to give you this and that, then you cannot receive an answer. Prayer and greed. I will say, talk about this. Let's say you're giving uh, $10,000 as a tithe, but you ask ask God to give you more, and and their demand is too much. So when you ask God for something, If you pray out of greed, you have to know what kind of greed you have. Some people also fast out of greed, out of greed, and they long for power out of greed. That's why, even though they fast, they cannot receive an answer. The same goes for prayer. You have to know what kind of prayer you are offering. Let's say you're running a shop and you, your next door shop and you ask God to bless your shop and not the, your next door shop. This is the prayer out of greed. You have to offer good prayer. Father God is love and goodness and the truth itself. That's why you have to practice those uh, goodness and truth, and then you have to pray and answer. Another thing, prayer for idol worshippers. You you may say, I have a relative or family members who are still not coming to church, and they are still worshipping idols. Does this mean I should not pray for my parents, my relatives? No. You can't. That means is that you should not ask God to bless the idol worshippers. So what should you do when your family members are idol worshipping? You have to pray that Father God would work so that they can quickly come to church. So the only prayer you can offer is that kind of prayer. You can at least uh, pray for God's protection, but... Uh, When when they are idol worshipping, you have to first pray for their salvation so that they can enter heaven so that they will not have any accident. But you cannot ask God to give them some kind of great blessing and your prayer cannot be answered. When you pray for others, you have to know what to pray about, what to... You have to know What kind of prayer Father God would listen or not? Also, prayer of doubt. Prayer without keeping the commandments. You may wonder, I'm still not living by the commandments, not still not living by the word. You have, even though you cannot, you 
That's why you have to make efforts and pray. But if you just live as you please without a desire to keep His commandments and then ask God to give you this and that, then Father God wouldn't listen. Father God first tells you to pray for His righteousness and His kingdom and you have to know what Father God wants from you and what priorities we should have in prayer. and prayer without sowing anything. For example, you ask God for blessings and you don't sow anything, anything, then how could you receive answer? Some people say, if God first blesses me, I will then give offerings. This is like a conditional. You have to first sow before God first. When you sow seeds, it will sprout and bear fruit, and then God will be pleased and answer your prayer, and you receive answers and blessings quickly, not just for financial blessings. The same goes for other areas. You have to also, you can also sow faithfulness, you can also sow prayer. You can, there are many things you can. You have to sow such things and then ask for your desires and then you, Father God, will quickly answer you. I talked about the, the items. When you harbor sin, when you don't keep the commandments, these are the wall of sin. Because you have s m a l l of sin, God looks away and answers cannot be received. So, the first thing you have to do is turn from your sins and repent. When you have such... In prayer, it's important to reflect on whether there is any wall of sin with God first. If there is a wall, then it needs to be torn down before anything else. When there, is an, when there is no wall of sin before God and prayer is offered in a God-pleasing way, anything asked can be given. As we receive whatever we ask for, we can glorify God to our heart's content. As we go about our religious lives, there is one aspect that follows prayer. As we seek the kingdom and the glory of God and answers, This is fasting. To be precise, it is fasting prayer. Some people fast from one meal to one day, for three days, a week, 21 days, or even up to 40 days. This can be, this can be to receive answer, to resolve illnesses or problems, or to repent. Fasting can quickly get rid of sins or can be a way to receive strength and glorify God. We fast not just for our own wishes, but for the kingdom of God. According to the Bible, fasting is offered to God in desperate situations where people have something that must be answered. When in fasting, you stop eating and only pray. You can You pray earnestly, putting your life in God's hands. Even fathers want to give good things to their children. If their children have a wish they de desperately want, they will try to grant their children even As a parent, you want to do and give everything to your child, even if it means skipping meals or cutting back on personal expenses. This is the heart of a parent. Then, how much more will God, the Father of our spirit, who loves us, answer the prayers of His children, especially when they put their lives in His hand and fast? That doesn't mean that you know, when you fast a meal, it's not like you're putting your life even if you fast for a week that doesn't mean you put your life in his hands when we watch the news 
people are stuck in a cave when some mines collapse and they are trapped in the mine and after 10 days they come out alive and they confess they they sustain their life by drinking raindrops that's why even if you fast um, three days or a week that doesn't mean you are putting your life on God even when you fast a single meal you it's uh, hard that's why you have to cry out all the more this is showing eagerness showing earnestness before God even though your life is not threatened you can fast a meal three days or a week. The reason is you have to move God's heart. You have to offer God-pleasing fasting. By pleasing God, you can receive His answer. This is the reason for your fasting. This is, uh, for example, a child whines before their parents. They ask their parents to give this and that. And they give conditions. If you don't do this to me, I will not have a meal. When their babies say that, parents are heartbroken. What about fasting? You have to please Father God. We are not whining before God. We are pleasing God. You have to... A child, for example, studies well, cleans up his room, and then asks their parents to do something. The same goes for fasting. We please God. I urge you to offer God-pleasing fast so that you have your earnest harsh wish. Let's say you show faithfulness and you need something desperately and you ask God to give you something and you desperately want to be healed but you have some some shortcomings. That's why you have to move, please God or move God by offering fasting. With such a mindset, you give fasting prayer. Fasting is not about not eating, not just uh, staying hungry. If you give fasting that is pleasing to God, you can receive, move God's heart. But in reality, we often see regrettable cases. Despite fasting for a long time, people don't receive answers. Sometimes fasting too much can harm the body. Why would that be? It's not because the Almighty God is powerless and cannot hear our prayers. No matter how long you fast, God is more than able to keep your body from damage. Even if you are not in good health before, God can make you stronger. This is what fasting is about. Let's say you don't have a good stomach. But if you fast in a way that pleases God, you have a stronger stomach. Even if you are weak, you become stronger through fasting. This is what fasting is about. If you fast, be- but if, if, if you fast before the Almighty God and receive no answers with the original problem still remaining, then there must be a reason. You say you fasted, but the answer cannot be given as it wasn't a kind of fasting appropriate before God. Even when you offer one meal fasting, let alone long-term fasting, you need to do in accordance with God's will in order to receive answers quickly. Just like prayer, there are kinds of fasting pleasing to God. May you become familiar with the kind of fasting that are pleasing to God through this message and receive the blessings to your heart's content. Then, let's look into the kinds of fasting that are pleasing to God. First, the fasting period and its purpose need to coincide well. 
In the Bible, there are 40 days, 20 days, and 3 day fasts. Each has their own purposes. For example, the purpose of the 40 day fast is to fulfill God's great will. It's not for personal gains nor business profits. To find typical examples from the Bible, Jesus and Moses fasted for 40 days in order to fulfill God's great will. Before his, uh, before his public ministry, Jesus fasted for 40 days to fulfill His great mission as the Savior of mankind. Moses also fasted to receive the Ten Commandments on behalf of all God's people. The 40-day fast is not for any personal reasons, but offered at an important time for the fulfillment of God's great providence and for the Father's kingdom. Next is the 21-day fast, which is also not for personal reasons. Generally, it is offered to clearly understand God's will and providence and to achieve a great purpose of fulfilling His providence. Daniel's 21-day fast, recorded in Daniel chapter 10, reflects it. To receive revelations for the vision of the end times, Daniel fasted for 20 days and prayed to God. An archangel came and revealed the secrets of the spiritual realm and the events of the end times. Brothers and sisters, looking at these examples from the Bible, it is clear that long-term fasting is not done arbitrarily. These are not offered for personal gain or for fleshly purposes, but for the kingdom of God and His righteousness and, and in obedience to the powerful works of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah didn't fast despite accomplishing great works such as seeking the answer of fire to testify the true God against the prophets of Baal and praying for rain to end the three and a half year drought. Though it was commanded by God, the prayer was also fervently offered. When it moved the throne of God, the prayer alone was able to obtain the answer. For Esther, it looked as though she'd have to fast for a long time because her people were on the verge of extinction. But Esther, along with her people, only fasted for three days. Even when there's a problem, even when there's a problem that needs to be answered, sometimes just praying fervently is enough. Other times, fast for three days or at most seven days is also enough. The shepherd, when the late shepherd signed a building contract for the church at its beginning, God had him fast for three days. When the fast was over, he immediately received an answer. He prayer and fasting have n many prayers have been piled up already. That's why just uh, offering it around the same time, Dick. Senior t i c k n e s s a d a a n testified to praying and fasting for three days to sell her house that was on the market for too long. After finishing, the house sold immediately despite putting the price up. It had not been sold. So she reduced the price. Still, the price was not sold. But after she offered a three-day fast, and then she put up the price by faith. And then, It happened. Through her obedience, the house was sold immediately. I think you've heard that testimony. If you only fast for three days, but fast to please God, you can immediately receive an answer. It's important to discern well when fasting for repentance too. There are times When s- there are times where simply repenting is enough, and there are times where we must submit ourselves even by fasting. For example, it would not be appropriate to fast for 10 or 20 days in repentance simply because you cease to pray. If you truly repent for ceasing prayer, you can pray without ceasing going forth. 
this wouldn't be an appropriate topic to fast for for a long time. It's also important to remember to thoroughly repent with tears if you have committed a crime and then fast before God in repentance. If you are still surrounded by and harboring sin while fasting, it has nothing to do with God. If you only fast for three days uh, but repent and completely turn from your mistakes, God will be pleased with you. If you fast for 21 days but Don't turn away from your mistakes. God cannot accept it. You may not understand this. I think you have fasted a lot. Um, Some of your mistakes. You have to know that just because you fast doesn't mean God will answer you. You, If you don't make hard efforts, but just rely on fasting alone, that... God, the Holy Spirit came and helps us. That doesn't mean we can, we, we don't need to make efforts. We ourselves have to make efforts and demonstrate this. The same goes for fasting. You should not take an advantage of fasting. Let's say you, some, you hate someone, you, then you have to show this. You have to give something to him You have to give compliments to him, and you have to stay next. St- you have to go and and do something that he likes. But but if you don't show such acts, but just fast, does this mean your heart automatically changes into love, and then hate is removed automatically? Of course, if you fast, Father God can work, but. Father God can uh, soften another person's stubborn heart, but it's no use if you don't show any d e e d s If you don't demonstrate d e e d s and only rely on fasting, you cannot bear the fruit of answers. Some of you who have uh, long been with the church, you fasted a lot. You remember with what kind of prayer sub- subjects you fasted. You have to know whether your prayer topics were pleasing to God or not. Many of you, I think, fasted for sanctification. In order to... You have to show these. You have to... You, your efforts have to follow. Also, just fasting doesn't mean that you will become sanctified a month or two. Sanctification is like a process of peeling off an onion. You have piled up yourself, piled up your evil for decades. That's why you have to peel off an onion. That's why just because you're fast doesn't mean your evil is cast off immediately. You have to go through the process You cannot say you're sanctified just because you offer a long-term fasting. And also, when you off after you fast, you face occasions where you discover yourself, and like you face trouble, you face a situation where you discover evil. I think you share that experience. Why? Unless you discover yourself, you cannot change yourself. I explained this uh, through the lectures on Job. Sanctification does not happen automatically. You long for sanctification. Some people say, I want to go to a remote island, deserted island where there is no one, and then I can achieve sanctification quickly. We go through trials through people around us. That's why we call our life human cultivation. We are cultivated together. Some people attack us. Some we have to examine whether we are joyful or thankful, whether we hate that person, whether we have complaints or fall into grief. If you don't go through that process, I mean, just because you. offer a long-term fasting doesn't mean you can 
attain to that level immediately. And once you discover yourself, you have to admit yourself. Then your fasting is not effective. How regrettable. You shouldn't say, there's no reason for me to fast. If you have big sinful natures, you pay for about that, and, but you cannot cast it off on your own. Then you can fast on your... But fasting is not everything. You desperately want to cast off your evil, and you fast, and you ponder over, and... it helps you cast off your evil quickly and it quickens the time for you to cast off evil this is the power of fasting this is how we lead our Christian life it doesn't happen in a single day even though you go to a remote island and you ponder over yourself doesn't mean you can achieve sanctification That's why I'm now delivering the lectures on Job. Job was uh, used to be complimented before God, but during trials, he was uh, he went through trials. You have to know that you have to. Sometimes you face a situation where you discover yourself through lectures on Job. You can have an awakening. And then you have to make efforts to also you can make use, take advantage of the power of fasting. And you have to also learn well how to offer g o d l e s s i n g fast. Of course, again, fasting is not everything. You have to show such eagerness, earnestness. You volunteer to stay hungry and cry out to God. Some people say, I no longer want to fast. That's why I have to cast off this evil because I no longer want to fast. What does that mean? You keep thinking about fasting is disciplining yourself. And that's why fasting gives you strength. Because while you fast, you have no strength, so you don't get i r r i t a t e you don't have irritation and you feel like you have become so gentle during fasting. You have no energy. You don't want to get angry. And and you even misunderstand that you have become sanctified. But once you start eating, then you discover evil again. And you have to remember how tough and difficult it was to fast and because you don't want to fast again, you just uh, want to cast off evil and this is the way of disciplining yourself God helps you as well, but you also have to discipline your body and make it your slave if you make such efforts even though evil sinful natures having combined with your body how could they not be removed? How could they not be... You can get rid of them. The important thing is you have to try to remove the sinful natures and evil while you fast. If you can truly repent and turn from your sin without fasting, then it's not necessary. Even if you were to fast, it wouldn't require a long period. There are times when people fast to ask God for strength to get rid of sin when it's hard to overcome and stop sinning by themselves. In most of these cases, a three or five or seven day fast can get rid of your most sinful natures. If you are at the stage of trying to change by fervent prayer and fasting, you'll be able to repent of sin with these fasting periods. Dear brothers and sisters, not only the duration but also the timing of the fast is important to consider in order to receive answers through fasting that is pleasing to God. 
Particularly, long-term fasting must be done according to the timing governed by the Holy Spirit. Among the Lord's servants and even those who are not servants belong for power to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God, there are those who fast. If you really desire to receive power for the kingdom of God, you'll be able to fast long term. But the problem is when. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 tells us to pursue love when seeking spiritual gifts. This means that you should not ask according to your own thoughts and desires, but according to the love within the heart that loves God. Receiving power is also only possible after a person's vessel is first prepared to be worthy of receiving power. After sanctifying the heart from all evil, you'll be able to offer 21 or 40-day fasts depending on depending God's chosen time. It's important to first prepare a clean vessel even if your heart's worthy before God, capable of receiving power, and full of fervor and zeal. If you simply make a decision out of zeal and enthusiasm when a clean vessel has been prepared, God cannot give you answers. This is because it doesn't comply with the laws of justice. Of course, just because you decide to fast without fully preparing a clean vessel doesn't mean God won't help. God can receive your passion and give you the ability to fast well, but after finishing the fast, the food of answers you pray for won't be there. Power cannot be given. You may wonder, You may wonder, oh, there's no answer. Didn't God receive my fasting? Because what you have to do first is to prepare your vessel. And then, though, when the Holy Spirit inspires you, you have to obey. Then you can receive the answer and receive power. In receiving power or strength, you can. But without preparing your vessel, if you just fast and ask with your individual passion or enthusiasm, then you cannot receive answer or power immediately. Does this mean God didn't accept your prayer? No, He received your fasting. It's like you put money into your savings account. but God will receive your heart and show mercy if you pray with all your strength to receive power He can shower you with more grace and strength to prepare a clean vessel now you pray to receive strength power but God uh, no matter how great your desire is It's important to first reflect upon yourself and prepare a clean vessel through prayer and fasting. If you really desire to receive strength and power, if you you want to fast for that, then what you have to reflect on about is whether you have a proper vessel before God worthy of receiving power, whether you have achieved sanctification, Then you should pray about, you should pray for, you should pray to cast off evil and sins prior to praying for power. When you pray or fast, there is an order. If you want to receive something, you have to make it your prayer topic. when you fast when you make a topic of your prayer yeah let's say you have pray fast for three days you have to be healed You want to be healed. That's why you fast for three days. But your prayer type, but your prayer topic is healing, blessings, answers on your family members, and you want to be used more greatly in the God's kingdom. 
This is greed. You, you say, Father God, but especially when you ask, make a prayer request, you, some people make a list of their prayer requests, many, many prayer requests, but this is greed. They say, write down all their prayer requests. I mean, that doesn't mean you will receive an answer. You have to focus on what you need most. Then you have to focus on that prayer topic. Then you can receive answers quickly. The purpose of... uh, You have to receive this thing first. And then next, you have to focus on your next thing. And especially in order to receive strength and power, first thing you have to do is to achieve sanctification. And then later, the Holy Spirit will inspire you to pray. And then you can also offer fasting to receive power or strength. This is the law of justice. This is the right order of things. When you pray to be used by God or receive strength and power, first thing you have to do is to circumcise your heart and And you, and then after that, you can, when the Holy Spirit inspires you, you can also pray to receive strength and power. Then you can receive surely the fruit of answers. One thing to keep in mind regarding the timing of your long-term fasting, whether you're a Lord's servant or a layman, you are to consult with the pastor in charge and inform the church. This is because long-term fasting involves putting your life on the line and it's important to first check whether the purpose, duration, and timing are appropriate before Father God. You can also create a wall before God if you decide to do a long-term fast simply out of passion without preparation and then change your mind halfway through. when what if you're not under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and just fast out of greed don't receive an answer and damage your physical health it dishonors God as we live in the first heaven we cannot ignore its justice for example just as you may not be protected from illnesses if you overwork your body without self-restraint fasting can also harm your body if you overdo it So, it's important to pray a lot, pray enough, and follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to uh, long-term fasting, if you feel the need to fast, you need to first take care of your physical health and be well prepared. Spiritually, you have to accumulate enough prayer. Let's say you're trying to give a 40-day or 21-day fasting, and, and you say that you are... If these people come to me, and then I ask them, how have you offered the three-day fasting or five-day fasting or seven-day fasting? If... uh, But some people have no experience of even three-day fast. Um... only done three-day fasting a couple of times, then I would make a suggest. Then you have to first give a three-day three day fast if you're not answered, and then seven-day fast. You have to increase your uh, fast. You have to know whether your inspiration is correct or precise. Of course, uh, during before and long-term fasting, uh, sometimes you need to offer a short-term fast to prepare for that long-term fasting. Uh, you have to be cautious about offering the long-term fasting and you have to consult with your pastor in charge and the, and the pastor should inform the church. This is the, how you can offer the fasting in a way that pleases God. If you, 
It's not something we do by copying others, but offer under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Even under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's crucial that we be prudent and be well prepared before the Father. By following the proper order, both spiritually and physically, we can offer a perfect fast joyfully accepted by God. For example, you have to prepare yourself also physically. Before a long-term fasting, you, it's not easy to go to work. That's why you have to be, take leave. You, especially when you're head of a family, it's not easy for you to make that decision. It's not... Otherwise, you will be seeking your own benefits. The Holy Spirit will not inspire your heart that way. It's just uh, your own thoughts or just uh, your physical passion. If you try to do a long fast, you have to also clean your house. You have to clean your house while you fast. When your house is messy, even if you pray, how could you pray in peace. You have to fix such habits as well. Let's say you are trying to offer a fasting that is pleasing to God. Not only should when you fast, not only should you fast at the church but at your home as because you have to pray enough during the fasting. Let's say your house is messy. How could your prayer be Father God, accept your heart and your surrounding as well. That's how you prepare your fasting. You have to consider your surroundings and your... Some people are inspired by the Holy Spirit to fast. And they faced, they are interfered. But if they overcome that rejection or hindrance and finishes the, their fasting well, then they're blessed. I will talk about the second point in the next session. The first kind of fast, the first point was to our duration, our timing should be appropriate before God. If you fast, if you God doesn't want you to do a long fasting for everything. And your prayer subject, your prayer topic has to be set appropriately. And there are also time, appropriate time for you to fast. Now you try to, let's say, you have to understand them well. I hope that This message will empower you to receive quick answers from God through fasting. Let's reflect on today's message in our prayer. Amen. Let's pray for the sick. Father God, thank you. Please lay your hands on all the mommy members who are worship, attending this worship. Mommy members in and out of Korea and all g c m viewers, please lay your hands on them. Please work with the a fire of the Holy Spirit and strengthen them and give them strengthen them lay your hands on all their cells and der, let them be perfect and strengthened please torn down have their wall ups and torn down Father we have the divine healing meeting if they have a wall they cannot receive an answers and blessings please let them help them tear down their wall ups and, and pr- repent and repent thoroughly with tears and Once they prepare themselves well, please please make all their pains go away. Please give them strength and strengthen them. Please help our students focus their studies and do their duties well. Please protect their workplaces and businesses and their families. Please protect them with the fiery walls of the Holy Spirit. Protect them and keep them safe and Give them peace. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.